today we're going to be getting rid of this old solar inverter and swapping it for this lovely new one. But first, like and subscribe and let's go. Oh, that stinks. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is gross. So hopefully these are, yeah, they're pretty much the same size as think as the old ones. They are heavier though. Easy to mount. We just got a fixing bracket on the back there, screws so either can side. We take that off. Um, MC4 connectors here. The only thing is the old ones, I don't think they've got MC4. I think they've, they're just wired indirect. So we'll have to crimp some plug, MC4 yeah, the plugs are, on the end. Yeah. Oh, they've given us some. I think um, Sam showed me it's like a stuffing gland, isn't it? But you yeah. you crimp the little metal bit and then click it in and yeah, that's it. So we've got these three old Fronius inverters. One of them has failed. The other two are okay, but they're all about 15 years old. They're out of warranty and they're due for replacement. So the client said to us, well, if you're gonna replace one, might as well replace all three because the other two are probably gonna be on their last legs anyway. So we're gonna take these three off and then we're gonna be putting these three new Solax inverters in their place. Hopefully the size and the cables that are in here are already kind of long enough that we can reuse them, but we're gonna to have to just take everything apart first and then see how that goes. So Keep first things first, what we need to do is isolate AC and DC sides. So these are the DC isolators. So in theory, all we need to do is turn off all the AC isolators. That one's already off as well. Come so what handy. should we do? Take the covers off and check? Yeah, so we, we basically do need to just take the covers off and make sure uh, that I just need to grab a different screwdriver. They are dead. That should just pop out now. So this side's out. It basically pops this little thing up. It's stuck, doesn't it? Yeah. I said, look, last time I was here, it was like Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom with all these cobwebs. Oh, we done that yesterday, didn't we, Stu? Yeah. I left my hat under the garage door and then waited for it to go all the way down and tried to pull it out. So how a solar PV system works is you've got an AC mains powered cable coming in to power the inverter. Then you've got DC cables going out into an isolator switch and then out from the isolator switch to the solar panels. So here we have three strings, what we call three strings of solar, basically three sets of solar panels. Each set of solar panels is wired back with a positive and a negative cable to this DC isolator. Then from the DC isolator, it goes in to the inverter. The inverter then takes that DC power and turns it into AC power. And the AC power will come down through this AC isolator and back to the house and it will power various things that are being used in the house. So we've isolated both of these, but what we need to check is, are they actually dead? Just because you can never trust whether an isolator switch is working, you need to check. So I test my tester on a known supply and then I check the connections in here just to make sure. I'll do the same on the DC side. Now I'm guessing that this will do DC, but, oh yeah, it says DC one to 400 Hertz, 600 volts. So it will do DC and AC, but it's always good to check. So if you turn that on, would you be able to detect? We can check, yeah, exactly. So Depending if we turn on that on, is. and we should see, there we go, we've got 400 volts DC. So it's got a minus, which means that it's DC. If we turn the power on, on the AC side, we can see we've got positive and negative, so it's AC. Great. So we are safe to work now. I think it's good if we can just make sure Don't forget that... to retest your proving. Oh that. yeah, oh, <laughs> oh nearly bro broke the safe isolation rule number one. There we go. Test your tester again at the end, just to make sure that it's not broken while you've been doing the tests. Now that we've checked that everything's safe, what we need to do is disconnect the DC and AC cables so that they're hanging out, ready to connect into the new inverters and then we can dismount these all from the wall and just plan out where we're gonna mount the new ones. So 
So the new inverters are a lot heavier than the old ones, but they are pretty much the same size at least. Slightly different connection method on these. They've got MC4 connectors and then an AC plug. Everything can just be unplugged from the bottom of this, which is a bit more practical than the previous solution. There's just a fixing bracket here, three fixing screws, and then two retaining screws either side. So I'm gonna get the bracket off, mount it up on the wall, and then I can do the terminations. So it's drill hold with driller. Have you got any drillers? Don't know what a driller is. Are you all out of drillers? I'm out of drillers. <laughs> I was wondering why I was getting so hot and I realised this halogen light that the customer set up is absolutely baking hot. It's 500 watts of halogen power burning through that and it's just far too hot to be working in a place like this. But there's also safety considerations with a light like that. I mean, we used to use them when I was an apprentice. I remember crawling around in a loft with one in my hand, dragging it across the loft and smelling the burnt insects as the daddy long legs got fried on top of the, the lamp. Probably quite a few fires were started. Now we're in a barn with straw everywhere. I don't really feel comfortable having this blaring away, but not only that, it's making me sweat like a pig and it's burning too much energy. So we are really thankful for LED technology now, which is what we use as our normal work lights. Let me show you the alternative. So this is a Unilight lantern. It's pretty much gonna give out as much light, if not more, than this thing, but with barely any heat and using much less electricity. Unilight is a fantastic brand of um, work lights if you're ever in the market for work lights we highly recommend these in fact we've got a special code where you can get 25 percent off all uni light products using our code if you head to the link in the description but i'm just going to hook this up now without worrying about burning down the barn our motto at artisan electrics is to always try and leave a customer's installation safer and better looking than when we first came in this case you know a simple thing like cleaning up the isolators it's all part of the maintenance of the installation really make it look like it's as good as new when actually we've only swapped the inverters it's all those little touches that make a big difference hooks on from the right hand side and then I would have to take, oh no, it hooks on from that side. Yeah. yeah just have you got a screw already for that one? Uh, it is here, yeah. Yeah, nice. Right, so we are mounted on the wall. Looks pretty smart. Now what we've got to do is crimp some MC4 connectors onto here and crimp the AC mains plug onto here and then we can just plug in and we should be good to go. So let's show you how an MC4 connector is crimped. So what happens with these is you've got this compression gland type thing that goes over the flex and then you wire that into this which is a mains plug. So you've got line neutral and CPC. We've got to cut these back to the right length wire them into that plug, that clicks in, it all seals up, which is completely waterproof in case it was mounted outside or anything. And then that will just literally plug in and give us our AC connection. So I'm just putting these little ferrules around the wires and then I can terminate those into this little plug. So I'll just show you how much I've left. So just done about that much, just so that it should kind of fit, hopefully, and be able to clamp up the compression gland. So that just clicks in, and then you know, probably have to push that in slightly. And that should cramp on, yeah, clamp onto there. Nice. And then that literally just plugs in. Oh, is it long enough? Oh no, not quite. So we're gonna have to put a new flex on this then. All right, so got shown this little tip from Ollie from Oval. Um, if you get your little multimeter out and stick it on voltage, if you haven't already marked up what's plus and negative coming from your solar panels, 
you can go on them and you'll see the voltage. If it just says it's normal, then you know that that's the right way around. And you're, if you're positives on that, then that's your positive. But if you swap them around and it comes up with a minus, then you know that's the wrong way around. So I'll just show you. So positive onto there, negative onto there. You can see we're getting our voltage there. So I know that that's my positive, but if I swap the leads around and I put negative onto there, positive onto there, you can see a minus on the screen. So that's not our positive, that's our positive. So just in case you're not sure and you wanna clarify what's what before you plug them in. So let us know in the comments what happens if you turn that isolator on and you touch these together. Maybe later in the video we can try it and see what happens. So we're actually gonna just replace these flexes because they're slightly too short and we just wanna make it a little bit neater. So we're gonna re redo those. Just gonna take this off and put a brand new bit of heat resistant flex. So this is DC cable and these are MC4 connectors. We're using four mil DC cable on this. I'm just gonna show you how to crimp a MC4 connector onto a DC cable. So the first thing we'll do is just slide this over there. And then what we wanna do is just strip back enough to put into this and crimp it on. And then with our crimping tool, We've got to go in the four mil space. And the, the tricky bit is just lining it up properly. Just crimp it down like that. And that has crimped that cable on nicely. This bit goes over. And then that just crimps on there to maintain a nice waterproof seal. So that is the female one. And then for the male one, it's basically exactly the same. Like so. And that pops on there. Yep, so that's clicked in. And then that will click into that, like so. And you've got yourself a nice tight connection. Each of these inverters, they have a little earth lug on the bottom because they're a metal casing. So what we're gonna do inside this enclosure where the AC goes back to the house, there's a little earth terminal. So we're gonna come out with this copex, we're gonna come round and up, and then we're gonna crimp on our earth to this lug. Then we'll just come across and link out each earth just so they're all earthed accordingly uh, to the instructions. So I think while I'm doing this, Jordan's just getting some bits ready and then we'll show you the DC connections. Things to know about these, which one's the male and which one's the female? That's the male. You'd think so, but well, it looks like the male, but it's positive. but which which pin which one of those goes in it? Yeah, that's the male because that goes into the positive, doesn't it? Yeah, it is the positive, but when you look at those, which one of those is the male and which is the female? Whatever one fits. Yeah. Say so the small one. That, that looks like the male, but it's actually the female because it it's that pin that goes in it. Yeah, and then this is the male because <laughs> it's that small pin that goes in there. But this one goes it's on the positive. Confusing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So this is the negative connector, which is actually the male. So it's got a solid pin there. The positive connector is the female, which is this one Lee's doing now, and that's got a hollow pin. So we've got a DC isolator underneath here. We have to flick that on. Power checking 26, 25, 24. I can hear something happening. It's making a clicking sound. Normal, okay. Two watts, 300 watts, 500 watts. There we go. We have power. There we go. And this is the one that wasn't working before. We got 500 watts on that now. 596 to 602. We are generating 
electricity from pure sunshine. So I've just registered the warranty. These new Solax inverters have a 10 year warranty on, just like the Fronius actually had a 10 year warranty as well. And we were up to about 12 years of life before one of them packed in. So I've registered the warranty and that just means that if anything does go wrong in the next 10 years, the customer can get it all sorted out under warranty. Are there any other benefits to having these new inverters? So obviously technology has advanced quite a lot in the last 12 years. So these new inverters should be more efficient, but there are also new functions that can be used with these. For example, they have a data connection option where you can monitor how much you're producing and things like that. Now we're out in a barn here. There's no way we're getting a data connection back to the house and it's not really needed in this situation, but it's good to have. And that's the thing about modern inverters. When you do upgrade your old inverter, there will be other new features that you might be able to benefit from to get more out of your solar installation. So everything's neatly clipped up and polished ready to hand over to the customer now. And you might wonder why did we install three single phase inverters instead of one three phase inverter? Well, the reason for that is that this is a very small solar array. It's only about three kilowatt. These are three kilowatt inverters, uh, but you can't get three phase, three kilowatt inverters or even three K phase one kilowatt. They tend to start at about six or seven kilowatts per phase. So this is the only way to do it on such a small system is to install a single phase inverter for each string and connect each string to a phase which goes back to the main house. And if you wanna see what it looks like back at the main house and the original installation, watch the video where we were here before where we did the original survey for this and you'll see all the electrics inside the house. It's quite intriguing. So don't try this at home. We're doing this under safe test conditions, okay? I've got all my correct PPE on. See that how it arcs constantly, basically. So it's the spark is jumping across and it, it doesn't, because it's, it's DC, it doesn't go through zero. So the spark will not stop. So if you're getting electrocuted with that, you are not gonna be able to let go like AC which is why DC can be so dangerous. So that is it guys, it was fun. Our customer's solar system is fully up and running again, generating lovely free electricity for him and his household. If you like these kind of solar videos, we've got loads of them on the channel, so head to the links below or the cards up here somewhere watch another video. We've got loads about solar and battery storage showing full installations of both so you might enjoy. Why not settle in, have a cup of tea and watch a few more videos with us. And if you haven't already done so, it really helps if you like and subscribe. But either way, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Is this going to be in the bloopers, this bit? Oh, this definitely has to be. You should put it back on the wall. <laughs> yeah, oh no, that's the yeah. new one. <laughs> we repaired it. I'm supposed to be disposing of these. I'm not sticking that in my van. Do you reckon we might have voided the warranty?